and skill and just bringing you more little thoughts from my bedroom on Tantra Yoga. Tantra is something that has to do with love more than anything else. It has to do with going into the deepest part of yourself, the widest part of your aura, and it's the science of that aura and those energy patterns and how they relate to the world around them, how they relate to other creatures, nature, other people, all of it, the whole thing. And there is a science to it that's been measured, these various pathways, and there are also measurings of the different exercises that you do in Tantra Yoga to bring energy rushing through those so that it feels like you're bathing yourself from the inside out of your very soul. The whole web, and Tantra, one of the etymologies is the web, the whole web of yourself lights up and becomes bright and clean and glowing and of course it's easier said than done to stay like that in today's society, any society I'm sure, but especially now with all these chemicals around us and avoiding those chemicals as much as possible is a major part of Tantra because it's the science of keeping those pathways clean and working and when they are working the benefits are fantastic. Chemicals such as tobacco, for example, W.C. Ledbetter was a writer who could see ours and he described what they look like and, and what happened with them at different times. And he said that tobacco would just tear apart all the layers of the aura and the different levels could not communicate. And he described all kinds of horrible things in this book and this is what I've also seen some with tobacco and other chemicals. So we want to try to stay away from anything that's going to be disruptive to our aura, especially if we're doing Tantra. If you're doing Tantra and you're around too many of those chemicals, you may want to do a cleanse, spend as much time as you can outside, wash yourself with sea salt water, burn sage in your room, do things that allow you to just let go of anything you've accumulated in your aura and do strengthening exercises for it. Draw in energy just consciously by noticing what you're around. If you're eating food, be conscious of that food, where it came from, where its spirit came from and let that come into you. And if it's the sunshine, be conscious of the sunshine as consciousness draw it into you with prana, the life force energy, draw that in, hold it in, be conscious of what's out, what's in, and the relationship between the two, and you're developing a resonance between you and everything else that you want to develop a resonance with. The things that are nurturing you, you want to be vibrating with those things, that's a form of digestion, that's empathy digestion and it actually physically affects your uh, processing of all these things. When these things are processed through and you can avoid as many as you can, your aura becomes more clear and clean and bright and more easy to see through so that you're seeing less of the confusion of this broken up life force of chemtrails for example. They really break up people's auras. It's nice to go out when there's no chemtrails in the sky and get lots of sunshine, get lots of fresh air, and do what you can to get negative ions in the air. Himalayan sea salt lamps, um, candles made from beeswax, these put negative ions in the air. Opening your windows, breathe in those negative ions. They'll help balance out some of the chemicals and the more chemical free your aura is, the more you're able to see through it and see what's truly there. 
if there is such a thing. <laughs>